Tucker Carlson says a lot of things that show that he's been given a lot of latitude. He seems to get away with speaking too much truth. And every time I prayed for him, I kind of thought, gee, I wonder how long he's going to last, exposing so much evil and corruption. And finally, they pulled the plug. They just pulled the plug on him, and he's gone. He is called the most powerful conservative voice on television. Why is that? The Tucker Carlson Tonight Show was the most watched cable news show during prime time from 2016 to 2023. That's a good, solid seven years to give to this. And on Friday, 21st of April, 2023, his last show aired. From watching it, you would think that he had no clue because he ended the show saying, see you next week. However, on Monday, the 24th of April, he found out that he didn't have a show no more. No reason was given. Many people on the internet have speculated as to why. Even the people who seem intimately acquainted with him don't really have a, a good reason. The Greek playwright Aeschylus said, simple is the speech of truth. Simple is the speech of truth. The simplest explanation that I can find is that the elites want to control the 2024 election. And that's what it's really about. Tucker was telling too much truth and educating too many people. Now, this is not the first time that it happened. Years ago, I used to watch the Bill O'Reilly show called The O'Reilly Factor. And he had the longest running number one cable news show from 1996 all the way to 2017. And suddenly one day we woke up and he wasn't there anymore. Then they got rid of Glenn Beck in 2011. They got rid of Megyn Kelly in 2017. They got rid of Dan Bongino in 2023. And each time they found a replacement. So the message is loud and clear. Fox is bigger than its celebrities, and if Tucker can be fired, you can too. So you better watch your words. That's the chilling message that's being sent all throughout the media world. So how should we as Christians respond? This obviously affects us because some of the shows that Tucker was airing, I think, preach more truth, including biblical truth, then many pastors have avenues to reach millions and millions of people. So how should we respond? Number one, I think we as Christians should respond this way. It's healthy to know that no one is irreplaceable. It's healthy to know no one is irreplaceable. I often think that I am probably not God's first choice. I don't assume that I am God's first choice. I assume that maybe somebody else tap, was tapped by God on the shoulder and maybe he said, I want you to speak about biblical justice. I want you to speak about end times. And many people would have said, gee, God, that's controversial. That's going to make some of the sheep offended. That's going to cause some of my tithe-paying members to stop supporting me. And so people say, no, I'd rather preach on love and mercy and grace and kind of the non-offensive subjects of the Bible. And the Bible has both. But sometimes you have to offend, not, un not consciously, but because Jesus, our Lord, did. So maybe God reached to some other people and reached out to them and they said no. And finally he said, okay, I'll go and ask Steve. And I said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, okay, whatever you want me to say, I'll say. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. Whatever you want me to do, I will do. And so God said, okay, then I'll use my second choice, Pastor Steve. If you don't follow God, eternity doesn't stop. You don't have to worry about that. If you don't want to obey God, eternity doesn't stop. God has other choices. It is a privilege that we get to serve God. It is an honor 
to be in ministry, any kind of ministry. We think incorrectly if we, if we say, well, the church should be grateful that I showed up. The church should be grateful that I do anything. No, we should be grateful that out of 8 billion people, we get to serve God. We get to be included in His eternal plan. Wow. Wow. God called us. God chose us. That's amazing. We find this in the Bible. If you need scriptural backup, I've got it for you. Remember, Saul was God's first choice. His first choice, of course, was a theocracy. He wanted to rule a special theocratic nation, Israel. He wanted to be king, but Israel said, no, we want to be like other nations. So God said, okay, here's my first choice, Saul. And Saul really screwed it up. Let's say it that way. And then we find David was God's second choice. In 1 Samuel 13, verse 14, the prophet Samuel said to Saul, But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. So don't be too proud. Don't be too proud. God can choose other people. The show will go on. And I think that's a good thing, in a way. I didn't really think this when the O'Reilly factor was taken off the air. At first, I thought, who's going to replace him? How can anybody replace him? And then Tucker Carlson took that spot, and to my amazement, he was bigger. I wouldn't say he's better, because O'Reilly had his unique thing of fair and balance, and he always presented both sides, and Bill O'Reilly now kind of gives a constructive criticism that Fox doesn't always present both sides. It kind of sings to the choir. So Bill was quite balanced, but Tucker was bigger. He got, he got to the controversial issues. He really struck a chord with the ordinary people, and he got three to five million views per night. But the good news is this. Number two, the truth lives on. The truth can be assassinated, but it will resurrect with greater form and greater force. And that's good news. The truth doesn't live and die with us. The truth will continue. We get to be a part of the expansion of the truth. The darkness will not prevail. The light has already won. The darkness is in its last grasping breath. And the world doesn't know that. Jesus has already won. And when we are Christian, when we believe Jesus and follow him, we're on the winning side. Number three truth that I can glean from what's happened. This is probably the biggest news right now. If you follow God and follow the truth, it doesn't matter who tries to cancel you. You will outlast your accusers. You know, we cannot name most of the pharaohs of Egypt today, but we remember Moses. We cannot remember most of David's enemies. If I say, name the king of the Amalekites, you'd be like, who? I don't know. I don't know who they are. His personal enemies, his military enemies, they were all powerful, and yet they're forgotten. But we remember David. We cannot name most of the Caesars who ruled nations. In today's map, they ruled over many territories, regions, and nations. And yet you and I can't name most of them. But you know what we do? We name our kids after these powerless, unknown fishermen like Peter and John. We name our children after Bible characters like David and Jeremiah. All these great military and and financial leaders of the world, they're forgotten today. But the ones who said yes to Jesus are remembered not only today, but for all eternity. Their names will never be etched out. You have to choose what you want to work for, who you want to follow. But I've made my choice. I'm following Jesus. Number four, We must admit that some people do set a high bar. 
For generations after King David, even though he was God's second choice, all the other kings of Judah and Israel were compared to him. Some people do a good job. We have to honor that. We have to recognize that. I give you some examples. 1 Kings 11, verse 6, Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and did not fully follow the Lord as did his father David. You're going to get compared to your father. I hope you had a good father or you have a good father. If not, you can find a mentor. All right? But you would, especially men, we will get compared to our fathers. Maybe you're better than your father. That'd be good. 1 Kings 15, verse 11, it says, Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did his father David. That's the bar. That's been set. Nobody does better than David until the Lord Jesus Christ was incarnated. So this time, I would say, even though Fox was able to fire so many people and find replacements, I think that Tucker has set the bar quite high. Something is different. How do I know? Because the Fox Corporation lost $962 million in market value in one day, on the day that they announced Tucker's departure. And so it's a combination of things. You know, people now trust independent news sources. We don't trust corporate media. And the only corporate media that was giving some kind of fairness and balanced view they cut too many people. It's like death by a thousand cuts. The first cut didn't do it. The second cut didn't do it. But eventually, you're now bleeding. You're hemorrhaging. Because the person who spoke normal people's language is gone. And it's not that it rides only on Tucker's personality, but it's been way too many cuts. And that's why. They've lost a lot of viewers. I think Fox became proud. I think they made an emotional decision. I think we can find reasons, and I'm going to give you some today and stick to the end. And I pray Tucker Carlson is watching because this will be a spiritual perspective, not like all the political commentaries that you're going to hear. This will be a spiritual word for you. Tucker Carlson, I honor you, respect you, but I'm going to speak as God's voice, as God's prophetic voice, so that you can enter into the next season, all right? And we don't have to be, you know, depending only on Fox, right, for the truth. So Fox became proud, and they thought that they could easily replace Tucker Carlson. So the number five truth that we can get from this as Christians is your enemy will make mistakes. Your enemy will make mistakes. Just be patient. When you're going through something difficult, you look at this. I mean, this is the, the example, isn't it? Tell the truth and you're going to be punished. This is supposed to set a chilling effect across the board. And this is, honestly, this is why, guys, this is why people say, well, why don't pastors speak more on certain subjects? Because they've been held back. They've been threatened. You don't understand the spiritual warfare that, that just comes from speaking the truth. Pastors need prayer. Pastors need your support. I asked, you know, 300-odd thousand YouTube subscribers. I said, man, if, if each of you would just give any support, I mean, $1 support, imagine what that would mean, $1 a month. But very, very few people do. We need support to do what we're doing, and it's better to do it independently, isn't it? I know God provides, but sometimes you have to say it. People don't realize. You support Starbucks. You support, you know, your internet provider, Netflix, all this. Well, that's how they are reaching the hearts and attracting the hearts of all the youth. You need to put your money where your heart is, and where your mouth is. We need to support good things. So, be patient. Be patient when they threaten you, even financially. Be patient. God will make a way. Now, here's one of the nice commentaries after this happened. Simon Ateba is a Cameroonian White House correspondent for Today News Africa. He, 
seems to credit his, uh, his career somewhat to Tucker Carlson. So he said this in a tweet. He said, there are many people on television, so why were you the most watched person in cable news in the most advanced country on the planet? Even those who hated you or your commentaries know how tough real journalism is. You did it because you're simply the best. So thank you for all, your, these, for all those evenings, all those hours of great journalism. Your future is bright. So why was he fired? Right now we're going to talk about some of the reasons. We're going to speculate a little bit, but let's explain this. All right? in, in one show, in one shot, let's explain all the things that's being speculated on out there. And let's bring truth to this. Number one, or number zero, I'm going to put this. Let's eliminate the false reasons. Number zero, it was not because Fox settled a defamation lawsuit with the Dominion Voting Machine Company for $787.5 million. How do I know that? Because number one, pharmaceutical companies routinely settle lawsuits against them for far more than a billion dollars. Did you know that? They do it all the time. And it's not an admission, in their view, it's not an admission of their guilt of causing harm to people. They just, that's routinely their way of saying, please be quiet. And we're going to keep doing what we do. So this is not the end of Fox News. This in itself is just normal business for these people. And so the pharmaceutical companies are not going to stop selling drugs even though they routinely pay out these large sums of money, which could you could read into it. It implies that maybe something is wrong, but they haven't admitted guilt. Just pay it off. So that's what Fox decided to do, just pay it off. We don't want the publicity. We don't want to go through the, the trials and the headaches. Number two reason I know that this has nothing to do with Tucker is Tucker distanced himself from criticism of Dominion. He consciously did that, and he refused to invite one of the greatest critics of Dominion, which is Sidney Powell. And I've met Sidney, and I don't, you know, I don't take a stance against her, but Tucker really did. He backed off, and he said he would not invite Sidney Powell back unless she could produce more evidence. So he gave her a chance, and then he stopped. So it, this has got nothing. This is a distraction if people think this is about the Dominion scandal or lawsuit. So we've got to dig a little bit deeper. What is going on? Why would you fire your most valuable asset? It's like a basketball team firing your MVP. Why would you do that? It, that makes no business sense. So let's eliminate another reason, all right? He didn't get fired because he wasn't doing a good job. Tucker drew three to five million viewers per night, as I said, and normally people get fired when they do a poor job. So Tucker evidently was doing too good a job at journalism. In fact, an ex-Army PSYOPs expert said Fox News fired Carlson to maintain semi-lobotomized, quasi-retarded population. Let me say that again. They want to maintain, this is how they think of the ordinary TV watcher. They want to maintain a semi-lobotomized, quasi-retarded population. He was speaking a lot of truth and educating people. And that's what we do. And our views get suppressed, and people, you know, out of 300,000 people, the majority of, of them say they're not even notified of our videos. So I rarely ask you to click subscribe and click the bell. I don't even remember asking that. But for your sake, you might need to do that because the algorithm seems to work against spreading the truth. So why was he fired? Tucker went where few dared to go. Number one, he got exclusive tapes that he said proved the January 6th insurrection is a Democrat hoax that's hurting the nation. He got these tapes that they wouldn't show. You know, they're trying to say that Trump supporters were trying to overthrow the government in a violent insurrection. And yet you could see on TV, we all saw it. 
people walking peacefully into the Capitol building. The police walking with them. You could see they arrive, including that guy with the weird dress and all that. I forget what they call him, but do you know what they call him? The, the shaman? Okay, the shaman. He dressed like a, like, like a shaman. Anyway, you know, they see this weird guy walking. Was he a threat to the police? You could see in videos the police opened the door for him. The single most famous person arrested that day was a Navy veteran from Arizona called Jacob Chansley, often referred to as the QAnon shaman. Virtually every moment of his time inside the Capitol was caught on tape. The tapes show that Capitol Police never stopped Jacob Chansley. They helped him. We counted at least nine officers who were within touching distance of unarmed Jacob Chansley. Not one of them even tried to slow him down. Well, that's not, that's not a violent insurrection. And he was the only person who would show that evidence on TV. That, that, I would say that's possibly a threat to them. Because they have this whole scenario that they want to basically get everybody who supported Trump Make you scared to ever have peaceful protests. Meanwhile, Black Lives Matter and Antifa can, can burn up stores, loot people's businesses, and they say, that's mostly peaceful protests. Don't believe your lying eyes. So he just showed it. And people saw, wait a second, this is not the scenario. This is not the narrative that we were fed for the past two years. Number two, he linked, and I'm quite proud of this one because I saw this and I thought, honestly, I thought this is one of the best insights anybody has ever had. And he aired this. He linked the transgender agenda to anti-Christian discrimination. I said, there it is. I haven't even heard a pastor say that. I can't even credit our ministry for saying that. And we've been on top of a few things. But he spoke it with such a pastoral anointing with such prophetic insight that he said basically we as Christians and I'm not sure if he's born again but he's saying the Christian faith teaches this that we accept our limitations we can't do anything we want we can't do everything we want put it that way we can't be anything we want to be we can't just call it there are limitations to our lives and how do we live? We live with an assured faith that there is a God who watches over everything. And when we trust Him, even though we're weak and flawed and limited, He guides us, He strengthens us, and He helps us, and He saves us even out of our own sins. And this is what transgenderism rejects. They say, no, we can be God. We call the shots. We say what gender we are. And this flies against Christianity. And so what it is really is an anti-Christian movement. And we are the only thing that stands in its way. So ultimately, they're coming after Christians. They want to criticize us. They want to see more blood from our side. It's an assassination of the truth. That's what they've been doing for ages. But it's amazing. He said basically it's a movement to substitute God. I mean, you think about it, it's, even if it's a, a real psychological issue that some people have, it's a minor, tiny fraction of the population. But suddenly it's come like it's a, like a big deal. Like everybody has to face this. But it's not true. But why do they want everybody to face this? Because it's a challenge to God's throne himself. They want to replace God himself. Number three. Number three flaw or mistake or possible reason why he had to be removed. Tucker made Dr. Fauci and the CDC look like fools. And very few people were willing to do that. And he called those names out. You know, all the mandates that have been implemented, they're not here anymore. And where they're implemented very forcefully did not fare better. In fact, fared worse than the places that had freedom. 
like Sweden and Florida. So you didn't do any better, and you did worse. And you had a negative economic impact, impact on children's schooling, impact on people's psychological, mental health, had impact on society, jobs, people lost jobs, some people still have lost jobs, all over this, and, and the mandate's gone. They no longer, in America just announced, they said that you no longer have to be vaccinated. It made no difference. It made no difference to lock people down and treat them like animals in cages. But it was an experiment in controlling people. And in that sense, it was successful, wasn't it? Got people to comply very quickly, but now some people have kind of woken up, and Tucker was saying that. These are just facts. Everybody, everybody knows it. This is the view of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. that Tucker was probably eliminated for this reason. He's now the 20, a 2024 presidential candidate. He was an environmental attorney, and he's an anti-vax activist. He tweeted this out on April 25th. He said, Fox fires Tucker Carlson five days after he crossed the red line. By acknowledging that the TV networks push a deadly and ineffective vaccine to please their pharma advertisers. Now remember, he was booted off Twitter before Elon Musk bought Twitter. So when he says things like this, they deplatformed him. And because Elon is the richest man in the world, he bought this platform and he's back. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is back. But you weren't supposed to say this. Why? Why aren't you allowed to say this? We don't live in communist China. We don't live in... Oh, wait. The Chinese own how much of Australia. The Chinese own how much of America. So we kind of do live and breathe at the behest of these financial overlords. We're treating our citizens like a, a communist dictatorship. Carlson's breathtakingly courageous April 19 monologue broke TV's two biggest rules. Tucker told the truth about how greedy pharma advertisers control TV news content, and he lambasted obsequious newscasters for promoting jabs they knew to be lethal and worthless. And that's a really good word for how these guys were. Obsequious. Look it up. To be servile. To be servile. To not even have any principle, but just to do what, you know, whoever's paying you tells you to do. You should be better than that. For many years, Tucker has had the nation's biggest audience, averaging, again, 3.5 million viewers. That's 10 times the size of the viewership of CNN. Fox just demonstrated the terrifying power of Big Pharma. In fact, I would add that if this is true, if what Robert F. Kennedy Jr. says is true, we no longer live in the age of the U.S. petrodollar. Think about it. If we live in the age of the U.S. petrodollar and the, the strength of, you know, petrol and, and the petrol economy determines America's future, why would they be pushing no more gas stove, no more fossil fuel, petrol's the enemy? No. You know what it is? We now have replaced, they have replaced the petrodollar with the pharma dollar. The petrodollar survived based on the fact that everybody in the world would buy U.S. dollars because everybody in the world would need to buy fossil fuel. But they said, wait a second, not everybody needs to buy fossil fuel. There's something even more fundamental, more basic, that, that we can push so that everybody consumes it. And it's pharmaceutical drugs. And you can't make the government buy fossil fuel for everybody's cars. But you can scare people so that the governments of the world, which in some countries are truly the highest level of organized crime, right? It's, it's, you've legitimized your own syndicate, your own racket. You've legitimized how you steal money from people. You can get those guys to then take the money from the people and involuntarily force them to buy your pharmaceutical products. This is better than petrol. 
So taxpayer money will not buy everybody fossil fuel. In fact, they collect extra taxation on fossil fuel. You know that? So fossil fuel and cars that run on petrol get an extra tax loaded on top. So there is a incentive for you to buy too many cars and too much petrol. It makes money for the government. But the pharmaceutical industry has found out, evidently, that we can extract money from the government by creating the pharma dollar. Now, this is a huge revelation. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. may be onto something. If this is true, then they no longer care about the U.S. petrol dollar. They only care about how many people will buy pharmaceutical drugs and get vaccine jabs. Because we can strip everybody of their money involuntarily, supported, sponsored, subsidized by government, which is taxpayer dollar. Amazing, huh? Number four, Tucker explained the moment he changed and became the person that his viewers love and appreciate. And it happened this way. I was there when this happened. As a young journalist, he backed America's war on Iraq because of the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. I re remember that vividly. I remember the room I was standing in. I remember seeing the first tower get attacked. I remember seeing the second tower get attacked. I remember when the tower collapsed. And it was an outrageous offense to the whole world. And so he, as a young journalist, backed the invasion of Iraq. But as the truth came out that Iraq was not responsible and Iraq had no weapons of mass destruction, he did something that few people do. He repented. He repented. He said he was deeply ashamed of his own views that were aired publicly. And he became suspicious about why most journalists did not also repent, facing the same facts that he faced. And he became an ardent skeptic of mainstream media and state propaganda. That was the moment Tucker Carlson changed. It defined him. It made his show, made him believable. So Tucker, like me, would not support the initial stories that were coming out about the war on Ukraine. Nobody agrees on everything. You know, like if 99% of the voters vote for Kim Jong-un, something's wrong. We know something's wrong. When everybody, left and right, Republican, Democrat, Labor and Liberal, everybody agreed on the war on Ukraine, something doesn't pass the smell test. Something stinks. The simplistic ex explanation that Putin was bad and Zelensky was good, that Russia was bad and NATO is good, is too simplistic in such a complex situation like war. Serious stuff. That's the most serious thing we can talk about. War is a serious thing. We shouldn't just jump in. We shouldn't just say, yeah, we'll give billions of dollars from Australia, America, all over the world to a former actor comedian governing the most corrupt country in Europe. Something's not right. And then you look at all the ties of the Democrat politicians who's got their children getting paid, sitting on the boards of Ukrainian companies. How does that make sense? So Tucker is guilty of attacking the military-industrial complex. America sells wars, and he wasn't buying it. Now, this is the view of Russell Brand. He believes the upper echelons of the Pentagon celebrated the cancellation of Tucker's show, and that Tucker's opposition to the war in Ukraine was fatal to his corporate career. There's a fifth possible reason and it could be the opinions or the views of Rupert Murdoch himself. He is, I believe, about 92 years old right now. He's the owner of News Corp, which is the parent company of 
Fox News. He's been married, I think, four times. At 92, he was engaged to a 66-year-old named Anne Leslie Smith. And this lasted for two weeks. Now, there is a rumor, a speculation, and I cannot verify, I'm just reading it, that Tucker Carlson was invited to a dinner with the couple, and Anne Leslie Smith, who is a born-again Christian and a former prison chaplain, told Rupert, I think she brought out the Bible or something, and she told her fiancé that Tucker was a prophetic voice in America. Well, we Aussies understand Rupert Murdoch because Murdoch, like most Australians, is psychologically pre-programmed to be anti-religion. We are anti-religion. Maybe it goes to the convict days. We don't like authority. We didn't like the priests and the people in charge who sent us over here. Not everybody came here as convicts, but that's the root of this colony. It was a penal colony. It was a big prison. So a lot of Australians cannot even explain to you why they're anti-religious. But Rupert Murdoch is anti-religious, and he called off the wedding and fired Tucker. That's the theory. I cannot verify that. Up to you to decide. Number six possible reason. Tucker interviewed people the elites wanted to silence. In particular, Donald Trump and Elon Musk, both in April 2023. His interviews platform people who affect the 2024 election. And remember, they don't want fair and honest election. Even if we don't look at the Dominion machines, you know that the Democrats don't even want to hold a primary debate for their presidential candidate. They know that Biden is so senile, so incompetent mentally right now, they don't even want to allow him to publicly speak in an intellectual debate. So they said, this, this time we're not having it. That's a tradition. You must have a primary debate. You must be accountable to the voters. You must speak up. What do, what do you really believe? What are you going to do? Even if we know that you're going to lie a lot of times, at least we want to see how you speak, how you lie. We want to have it on record that you did lie. We want to know. But he's not going to do it. They're protecting him. Now, this is the view of Tom Wood, a libertarian ac academic and author. He said, this is part of a bigger picture to control the 2024 election. He says, there's been a lesser known firing of a much lesser known individual than Tucker Carlson. After 37 years, Ted Galen Carpenter, one of the only people worth much of anything at the Cato Institute, was suddenly let go. So we don't know that this is all happening around the same time. Mr. Carpenter said, after 37 years, my role as scholar with the Cato Institute has come to an end. We did not part on pleasant terms. I discovered the hard way. I discovered the hard way. This is the clue. He's lesser known, so he's going to tell us the truth about what happened in his case that happened around the same time. He said, I discovered the hard way that criticizing Ukraine's government or Washington's support of that government can prove fatal to one's career. That's what happened. So the truth is, legacy media is dying. It's lost our trust. And Tom Wood said, there are far too many of us who agree with these silenced voices for those voices to vanish altogether. I rather suspect they will come back with a vengeance. Number seven possible reason, and this happens to be my view, I believe this is nothing new. This is as old as Satan. It is a demonic attempt to, ass to assassinate the truth. It's what the devil's been up to all the time. Don't call it censorship. It's worse than that. If they could, they would kill the messenger. They did it. They killed Jesus. They killed our Lord. Jonathan Kahn, I saw a quick video. He called this the return of the demonic gods, the return of the false gods. 
that once ruled over America before her Christian awakening. And that's in the Bible. The Bible says if you cast out a demon and then you don't, you know, you swept the house clean and you don't fill it with good things, then the demons come back seven times worse. And America was that nation that was swept clean by the blood of Jesus, had so many Christian founding fathers. It's recorded in their writings. They're not, don't tell me they're Masons. I don't believe it. I've read their writings. Now, the Masons want to take advantage and claim everybody. You understand that? Everybody wants to claim Jesus, for instance. Every religion wants Jesus to be on their side. But it doesn't mean that Jesus is related to Krishna and is a Hindu, one of the Hindu gods. You got it all reversed. The Masons tried to take over all of these famous names that people respect. But these guys were truly Christian, most of them. And America had such a cleansing. You know, America was not this uh, innocent land. The American Indians, the Aztecs, the Mayans, these are not innocent people. It's not a simplistic case of white people coming in to oppress uh, native people. These native people had so slaughtered people in such a brutal way that God must have heard their cry and said, judgment is coming. And it came through the plague, it came through diseases, it came through war, and, and when they repent and found Christ, it stopped. But this is not a racial thing, this is a spiritual thing. It didn't matter the color skin of the people that came. What mattered was when they brought the gospel, then all of the scalping and the killing and the torture and the ripping of hearts out of people who are alive, thank God those things stopped. These are not innocent people, right? Everybody's a sinner. And there was a great Christian awakening that changed the Americas. And because in the past few decades, people have been rejecting God, the demons are coming back. Nothing new. Here's a meme. You guys know this. If you do any crypto, you see this guy all the time. This one says on the top part, Tucker Carlson says he's going to prove Epstein was murdered on his show. Tucker Carlson just got fired by Fox News. So one of the bravest things Tucker touched on that was considered untouchable was Jeffrey Epstein and his list of celebrities and politicians who visited his pedo island. He dared to touch on that. And what Tucker might not have realized is that he stepped into a spiritual war without spiritual armaments. When we talk about putting on the shield of faith, taking in our hand with us the sword of the Spirit, these are real things. You've got to pray with Scriptures. You've got to be acquainted with Jesus. You've got to know the power of the blood that protects you. So he stepped into this realm, and I don't think that he's been pastored or spiritually trained to handle the demonic that would come against him. But I believe that as I watched some of the last you know, few months and weeks of his show, I recognized that Tucker was stepping into his true anointing. When he did that piece about transgenderism, I was, I was so impressed at the insight that he had, that the spiritual roots of the woke agenda, the transgender agenda, is really an anti-God, anti-Christ root. So the devil had to try to stop him. But the devil really did us a favor. The devil showed his cards. He showed his hands. It turns out that we know now, telling the truth works. Telling the truth is more powerful than all the money the elites have, all the guns they have, all the laws and judges they might control. Telling the truth scares them. So we will keep telling the truth. So where next for Tucker Carlson? I want to bring an Australian point of view. I always liked Corey Bernardi. A little bit sad that he kind of disappeared off the scene because his party, the Australian Conservatives, an incorrectly uh, named party, I think poor marketing. But anyway, that was a, a brief flash in the pan. He was leading a minor party here, but he always had very good insight into things the way they are. And he said, oh, by the way, he's the former senator for those who are 
uh, not familiar with him, former senator for South Australia from 2006 to 2020. He said Carlson went where few others dared to go. That's why people watched him. Even I was amazed at the latitude he was granted in some of his monologues. The amazement wasn't because he was, what he said wasn't accurate. I was just surprised his network allowed him to go there. They often reminded me of another Fox, former Fox News presenter, Glenn Beck. He was sacked from his high-rating daily show in 2011. Apparently, his conspiracy theories were too out there for some, even though viewers watched in droves. That many of the conspiracies turned out to be correct was of no consequence. Beck simply rocked too many boats and hence had to go. It's why independent conservative media groups like The Daily Wire are growing exponentially. They can push more boundaries and pay more money to att attract top talent. They, The Daily Wire, recently offered a popular but niche commentator a reputed $50 million contract over five years. The talent turned it down. Others like Dan Bongino, whose contract was also recently not renewed by Fox, have some of the top rating content on the internet. They make a lot of money despite being blacklisted by YouTube and others. That's why we keep saying, come to online church. We know they would prefer to blacklist us. We know that they don't blacklist us yet because shadow banning works better. Unless someone like, Twitter, like, like Elon buys Twitter, you don't even know. You can't even prove you're being shadow banned. But you just suspect it because people aren't seeing it. It's not being recommended. The videos you put up aren't being notified to people who want to follow you. So then we say, prepare now. Go to discoverchurch.online. Be a part of this ministry. Be a part of something spiritual online. And come and see an uncensored platform. This is the world we now live in. There is no space left in legacy media for those who want to rip the scab off of the global corruption. Businesses have surrendered to the power of the woke mob and networks have caved into the might of government. Regrettably, this process was as predictable as most everything else the leftists pursue. So Tucker has a bright future. There's a lot of people that want to hire him. The T Heritage Foundation said just, I think, a week before he actually got fired, they said, anytime you lose your job, almost prophetically, <laughs> you have a place here. Glenn Beck has already said at The Blaze, they'd love to have Tucker there. Uh, OAN is what again? One America Network or News? Anyway, One America Network. So o OAN, I'm sure they would like to have him as well. Many people want him. However, he signed a contract with Fox that's worth $20 million a year. So he may be contractually bound by what's called golden handcuffs. And that's why we don't hear a lot from him right now. A guy named Amuse on Twitter says, Tucker Carlson's contract was signed in February 2021, running through February 2024 or 2025. As a result, Tucker will be benched throughout most, much of the presidential election and speculation is that this was done very much on purpose. Tucker had a non-disparagement clause, so he won't be able to say much. Hopefully Tucker has an out, as this would be very bad for the GOP. GOP means the Grand Old Party or the Republicans. Then a few, uh, I'm going to read the thread out here. A guy named Jerry Rogers says, They, Fox, broke the contract, didn't they? And Amuse says, nope. The way these contracts usually work is that as long as Fox pays Tucker, he can't go anywhere else. They have the right to bench him. They paid $20 million a year for this right. Now, Tucker's agent might have included an out that requires them to use him or lose him. We will find out. Then Lizzie responded, could he podcast independently with no monetization during his period, this period, and still cash those checks? This seems an obvious win, if possible. Mar-a-Lago Free Press answered no, because Fox is paying him for his content, whether he's charging other people for it or not. You see how, how they bind people financially? And this is what the Antichrist is going to do in the end, is you can't buy or sell. You can't buy or sell. So who's into not buying and selling? 
the devil. So we, Christians, should be buying and selling. It's legitimate, it's completely legitimate to charge fa fair value for good, high-quality products or services. That's how you participate in a free economy. But the devil says, no, you're not allowed to do that. We're not going to allow you. So he, his hands are bound this way. Again, so many ministries that are preaching the truth, our hands would be off the, handcuff, off the, yeah, the handcuffs if we didn't have to think at all about any financial pressure that they can put on us. YouTube does not pay us what I think we deserve to be paid. And the reason I know that is because four, five, six years ago, when we had far less subscribers and far less views, we got paid much more. It's so strange. Now we have triple the subscribers and we have a fraction. A fraction of the payment that's due to us. Why? Because we brought the, the viewers. We bring the viewers to come back and see and, and, and play YouTube. And then they play their ads and that's how they make their money. You understand that they depend on creators like us. We're creating value for them. But then they censor us. So we have to create an economy or create a platform that's outside of that. That's why we have the online church. It's to maintain the ability to keep promulgating and pushing out the Word of God without depending on their pressures, not being scared of their pressures. So they don't like that. So they even go and attack. PayPal would say, well, we're now not going to allow, you're not allowed to use our PayPal service. And that's what PayPal did to a lot of conservatives and Christians. So they got many ways to try to stop you from buying and selling. That's what the Bible warns about. Not the other way, right? So he says, no, uh, Fox is paying him for his content. Allowing him to produce free content on the side would cut directly into Fox's paying audience. Or at least that's how such high-paying media contracts usually work. Aaron Kerr then says, Typically, with a contract like this, if you choose to leave, you cannot work for anyone else until after that contract period. But when the company fires you early, you retain that right to go elsewhere. Jerry Rogers answers, contracts vary. We will soon know. Then Sal45 says, what if Tucker forfeits the money remaining on his contract? Okay, so he d doesn't take the 20-odd million dollars or what's left. You would think Murdoch would free him up. It's the least he can do for our country. Then three cats said, this is more about keeping him locked out of honest reporting during election. And I agree with that. This is how all, that's my opinion, this is how all the parts are being played. Total media control of narrative. Zero loss so they can convince us of the next fabricated winner as president. Only way they win is by lying and cheating. That's what, that's an opinion. So how would you respond? Tucker's first public statement after he parted ways with Fox News is quite impressive. It's on Twitter. You can look at it yourself. Have a look. Good evening, it's Tucker Carlson. One of the first things you realize when you step outside the noise for a few days is how many genuinely nice people there are in this country, kind and decent people, people who really care about what's true, and a bunch of hilarious people also, a lot of those. It's gotta be the majority of the population, even now. So that's heartening. The other thing you notice when you take a little time off is how unbelievably stupid most of the debates you see on television are. They're completely irrelevant. They mean nothing. In five years, we won't even remember that we had them. Trust me, as someone who's participated. And yet at the same time, and this is the amazing thing, the undeniably big topics, the ones that will define our future, get virtually no discussion at all. War, civil liberties, emerging science, demographic change, corporate power, natural resources. When was the last time you heard a legitimate debate about any of those issues? It's been a long time. Debates like that are not permitted in American media. Both political parties and their donors have reached consensus on what benefits them, and they actively collude to shut down any conversation about it. Suddenly, the United States looks very much like a one-party state. That's a depressing realization. 
but it's not permanent. Our current orthodoxies won't last. They're brain dead. Nobody actually believes them. Hardly anyone's life is improved by them. This moment is too inherently ridiculous to continue, and so it won't. The people in charge know this. That's why they're hysterical and aggressive. They're afraid. They've given up persuasion. They're resorting to force. But it won't work. When honest people say what's true, calmly and without embarrassment, they become powerful. At the same time, the liars who've been trying to silence them shrink and they become weaker. That's the iron law of the universe. True things prevail. Where can you still find Americans saying true things? There aren't many places left, but there are some, and that's enough. As long as you can hear the words, there is hope. See you soon. But uh, one thing that would impress you from this video is he said nothing about his own hurt or pain. He barely talked about himself. He was raised not to begin too many sentences with I. He said it wasn't re rewarded in his family to talk I and me. So he just didn't talk. You think you've been so you know, you've suffered injustice, you would talk about yourself. And for two minutes, he talked about America and its future and the good people in America. That's quite noble. That's a good response when you're going through injustice. Here they try to get some reaction from him. He's, you see people driving golf carts, you know, they're in Florida. Everybody has got golf carts, evidently, if they live in these, you know, private estates. And uh, they caught him. They caught him driving with his wife. And look at the face of that man. Looks like he's got not a care in the world. He just lost $20 million contract, 5 million view, viewers per night. Doesn't seem like he's got a care in the world. He said he's hardly home for dinner, and now he gets to be with his wife, and he's enjoying his family. It's fantastic. What's fantastic about him is he doesn't take himself too seriously. He questions himself. You get worked up because you're questioning other people. Why do they do that? How can they do that? How dare they? You question yourself. You question yourself. I don't deserve everything I have. God's been better to me. What's God got for my life? How's God going to keep using me? You question yourself you're in peace. But you spend all your time questioning other people and how bad they are, you're going to lose your peace. So he questions himself, and I've heard him do that in interviews. He even questions his own faith. He speaks in a very self-effacing way that he doesn't have the very best theology. He questions the Episcopalian church theology and how they don't take a stand on some of the Bible issues. He says, we don't have good theology if you don't take a stand on the Bible. So I have a prophetic word for all of us listening, but especially for Tucker Carlson. What is this about for you? I believe, by the Spirit of God, that this is a Peter moment for you. If you would receive it, listen to these two scriptures. Peter said this in his later age, older age. He said, you who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. There is a transition going on in the world and in Tucker's life. And you who once did not know the mercy of God are now invited to know the mercy of God through His Son, Jesus Christ. You once who were not his people, yes, you went to the Episcopalian school. I did as well. I relate a lot to Tucker Carlson. I went to the prep school. I went to two Episcopalian schools. I know exactly what he's talking about. And just because we were in that kind of school or we went through some sacraments or we were the altar boy, I was the altar boy for the Episcopalian schools as well, it doesn't mean that we are a people of God. We who once... We who once were not a people, but, 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 but are now. That's the difference. There's a change that God wants in your life. He wants to draw the line. And when we're so famous, so busy, so rich, we don't make that crossing. 
It's time to make that crossing and get serious about your faith. Establish it on the Bible, not on Episcopalian tradition. And I'm not against that. I, I benefited from the schooling. But there's more. You did not obtain mercy, but now you're going to see the mercy of God, Tucker Carlson. The second scripture for you and anyone else who would like to receive this in this season is Mark chapter 1, speaking about Jesus in verse 16. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. It's the same delineation. It's the same boundary that's being created. They were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. Tucker got onto the edge of his anointing and started getting, I believe, revelation. But now he wants you not just to be a reporter for Fox News, but be a reporter for the truth himself, for Jesus Christ. You've got to make that transition. And I think one of the people who didn't make the transition was Donald Trump. I wrote a book for him. This, this is what God's agenda is. And I'm, you know, sad to say it reached him, but he didn't read it. But now there's time. Please, read it. Get trained. Get spiritually prepared for the next season. It's nice to be a fisher, but it's better to be a fisher of men. Right? It's nice to report the news, but Tucker Carlson, do you know it's much better to report the good news? It's a much higher calling. And he doesn't have to be a preacher with a dog collar on his neck, but there's some anointing that you need to prepare for. And if you don't know how, ask me. But God will send you a pastor, somebody who can walk with you through the season and get focus on spiritual matters, eternal matters. So you can use your, the, the, the platform and the personality and the, the knowledge that you've been given by God. A lot of people just walk on the edge of their anointing, but they never dive in. I think it's time to become a fisher of men. How should you respond? Remember, eternity belongs to Jesus. If we're on Jesus' side, we're going to be laughing all the way into eternity. And we will forget the pains and the sorrows and the injustices that we suffer. But we've got to be on his side. So if Tucker or anyone else does not yet know Jesus, I invite you to pray, repent and pray, ask him into your heart. I'm going to ask the church to bow your head and close your eyes for a moment. And if you're viewing me tonight and you understand that Jesus is Lord, he died for your sins, I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. You are the Savior. I repent for my sins and I accept Jesus as the only price to pay for my sins. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for me. I believe after three days you rose again from the dead. Show me the purpose of my life. Show me the meaning of my life. Use me. For your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if this pain caused Tucker to come closer to Jesus, it's worth it, isn't it? It's worth $20 million. It's worth $50 million. It's priceless. And Tucker, I hope you're listening. I want you to, I want to humbly recommend a book called President Trump's Pro-Christian Accomplishments which will give you a spiritual perspective on the things that you've been reporting on. Like no other book. And it was number one on Amazon, so it passed the smell test. It was number one. This is not just any other book. I even have a church member smiling, gave it to her mother-in-law, and she said, this is the best book I ever read. And I would never say that about my own book. I just write them, and then I just go on writing something else. But a spiritual perspective is needed in America. And, Ameri and among American thought leaders. And then if you finish that, I also recommend Trump's Unfinished Business because it's not about Trump. It's about giving the thought leaders a spiritual template for a great awakening. What do we do, biblically speaking, 
not guessing, not wondering, not trying our best, not going back even to the Founding Fathers. Stop just going back to the Founding Fathers. Go back to the Heavenly Father. Don't go back to the found Jefferson's words. Go back to Jesus' words. How do we apply what God has given us in a nation to save it? And that's there. Ten, ten answers for ten different areas of society and life. Amen. All right, so I pray, and we all pray. We're all praying for Tucker Carlson that God would have, that you and God would have such an encounter that this time would be worth it and the world would be even more blessed when you reemerge out of your contract and out of any restrictions. You're going to be such a mighty force for God. Amen. 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 Amen.